Yo, it's your boy Adol, going to be showing you my ultra attacking tactics because they're just so effective and it might help you out with your game. This is the main road to glory. I'm going to be doing 60 weekend league games. I've got an alt account as well. So if you want to check me out, the link is in the description below for my Twitch. Okay, so let's get right into it. So as you may or may not know, I do have custom tactics videos for what I run pretty much on all the tactics. So ultra defensive, defensive attacking and ultra attacking. As you can see, three of them do have different formations. But in this video, I'm going to be specifically sort of analyzing the ultra attacking tactics, the 424, just because I, I rate them so highly and I've really got a video about my tactics. I haven't changed nothing for this weekend league, so they still apply. Okay, so I'll be showing you a little bit of gameplay as well and showing you how the play instructions and the tactics can sort of take effect into game. Okay, first of all, we're going to start with the defensive stuff. The reason I run press off the possession loss is, like I always say, gives you two options so in game by the d-pad you can just go to constant pressure so by starting on press after possession loss if you do want to go more pressing just via the d-pad go constant pressure so you've got an extra option there with the defensive style they're obviously the most sort of offensive and pressing tactics on the game they're pretty self-explanatory every time you lose the ball your team is going to press in all areas to try and get it back constant pressure it's going to be even more. It will drain your stamina even more as well. Okay, so for the whip, I say four or five is optimal. I tend to leave mine on five. I prefer it on that, but four is quite compact as well, and that also works. I wouldn't go any less or more than the four or five. So with the depth, I have mine on eight, and in-game, if I do want to go even more pressing or even more higher depth, then I have it on 10. Remember, it is very offensive. I have very pacey defenders, 99 Van Dyke and Boateng, both with shadows. They have over 94 pace, as well as my fullbacks, who are absolutely rapid as well. So it's very important to have the right chemistry styles and the players to suit. And you want to bear in mind that you're aiming just to get the ball as quick as you can and obviously have more of the ball than the opposition. You are potentially going to leave yourself more vulnerable to attacks. But that's the whole point. If you're three, four goals down on this game, you can always come back. That's just how this game is sometimes. You can be losing when you don't deserve it. And there's no point by there's no point losing by a couple goals in this game. You want to do everything you can to win it within reason, which is why these tactics are so good. Okay, offensive style, fast build up. I have it on fast build up because it's the most offensive and most quick way to get your ball from your end to the opposition's end and try and get a goal. I reckon that fast build up and long ball are the best too. Long ball is more sort of counter attacking and direct, I'd say, and a bit more safe. And fast build up is a sort of more extreme version of that. Okay, so yeah, either one of them, I have mine on fast build up. If you want to have it a bit more safe, then I'd say the long ball. With the whip, I always leave mine on five. The only formation I'd recommend maybe tweaking around with it is something like a 4-1-2-1-2 narrow, which is quite compact, and you maybe want to increase that by one or something like that. But I always leave that on five. Players in box, I have it on seven. This one's a bit of personal preference, but if you have it on 10, obviously you can be getting some defenders in the box, which is, I don't want Van Dyke voting or even some of my fullbacks in the box because obviously they haven't got the best shooting stats. So yeah, I have mine on seven and I find that pretty good. I get all my midfielders in there and help support the attack. Corners and free kicks is definitely personal preference. When I have it on one, I still have everyone in the box. When I have it on five, I still have everyone in the box. I don't know what it is. There, there's something wrong with it, I'm sure, of this game. Okay, so yeah, the formation, like I said, is obviously the 4-2-4. You might find it quite un unorthodox, but it is very effective, trust me. Before we go into the player instructions, I'm going to be showing you in some in-game highlights of, of how it actually works. We've got the cut inside, getting behind, getting box across with the wingers. So just bear that in mind. Both centre mids are on balance cover centre. So when I show you the tactics, it will kind of make sense now. Okay, so the opposition has the ball now. I've got my ultra attacking tactics on. I obviously wouldn't use them at nil-nil, but this is just for sort of a video purposes. See how quick the, the sort of midfielders press because they're both on balance attack. Right, we'll just see again how quick we can get the ball back. So we've got obviously the forward there and it just, it covers all areas of the pitch. If you just saw the players that was around me there, he really does have nowhere to go and it's just so effective. So yeah, I'll just show you some more clips as well from this match just to show you how quick we can press and get the ball back. So we've got our midfielders and just look on the pitch, all of my players that surround them. The high depth, it's, not, it's eight depth, but it doesn't look as high as it is. Um, it only depends in certain situations your team will be on high depth. A lot of the time they won't actually push that high. So as you can see in this sort of area, how many players I've actually got in support. My defenders are pretty much past the halfway line. I've got the two strikers there. I've got the wingers in support, got the extra midfielder. And it's just so easy to attack and create chances. Showed you a lot of sort of the defending side of it. So yeah, it makes sense to show you the attacking as well as ultra attacking can be very good for pressing. Obviously, scoring goals is what it's all about. So we've got our two midfielders that are on balance, give us a lot of opportunities. 
ways to attack. Got our wingers there that always open. This guy's playing very deep, kind of, kind of looks like drop back. We've got our striker here, midfielder here. And then you can just keep passing around until you get a good sort of goal scoring opportunity. We just win the ball back straight away. And then as you'll see, my whole team is going to push up. We've got our striker here. We've got our fullback here. We've got our extra winger. Do a ball roll inside. And, you know, you can just build up your attack. Yeah, as you can see, we've got loads of players here. That midfielder's making a really good run there. The pass didn't go through to him. But the midfielder's there again. We've got my other centre mid pushing up. Just got loads of players there. He looks like he's playing drop back one depth and he's kind of pinned in his box. Okay, so we're back on the custom tactics now and I'll show you how they work so well, especially with the player instructions. Okay, so both your left winger or right winger, if you want to call them that, cut inside, getting behind and pressing box across. If you want to go one further or even two further, you can obviously go for the stay forward, aggressive interceptions. But I like it on, on basic and normal for that one. But yeah, cut inside, getting behind and getting box across. They're just always going to be making different runs and pulling out, dragging out defenders and obviously interchanging with your strikers as well and cause the fullback, centre-backs a lot of issues. Both strikers I do have on getting behind. I have one of them on stay forward just so that the other one can drop off a bit and give more options. And then obviously the other wing goes on the same as the other one. Cut inside, getting behind, getting across. some cross. As you saw of all the attacking situations, our midfielders were constantly bombing forward and making runs. This is going to be dependent on work rates as well as the custom tactics. So do bear that in mind. I believe Goretz has got high medium, the attacking way around. So he's obviously going to push up a bit more than Dombele. But they're both on balance and cover center. So they are going to support me more. If you've got one DM, you really don't want to, to be in an attacking situation. Then maybe you can have him on stay back. But I really consider having one, if not both of them, on balance. Both fullbacks are on balance as well. They're going to obviously be part of my attack even though we've got the wingers there they're going to be as close as they can to them or even sort of make runs or even make runs you can do one twos and do overlaps with them manually as opposed to the actual run type so yeah that's the custom tactics for the ultra attacking i do really hope it helps you for this weekend league don't forget to like and subscribe like i said my twitch link is in the description below as well as all my other socials it's been your boy that is one more thing to say safe